In this video, I'm going to show you 10 useful Linux commands that you need to know for basic server administration. And these will not only help you with administering a server, but also maintaining a server and understanding what's going on. So let's have a look. I'm logged in here to my Ubuntu server. And the first command we're going to be looking at is PS, which stands for process status. Now, when you execute this command by itself, it's not very helpful. There is a common set of arguments if you pass in dash AUX you'll see a whole list of all the processes running on your system. And at the very top here, you can see what each of these columns represent. So we have the user column, the process ID, how much CPU it's using, how much memory it's using, and a bunch of other columns that we won't talk about too much. The one important one is the command. This is what is actually running this last column here on the right. Now, what I'm gonna do to give you an example of uh, interacting with these processes via their process ID. I'm going to start up, I have this script right here, it's called hog.py, it's a Python script. Uh, I'm just going to start up this Python script that's just going to sit here and run forever in the background. Now back here, let's execute the psaux command again. And you'll actually see that we found that process down here at the bottom, but this is a really long list. Sometimes your, your process might not immediately be obvious to you. So you can combine ps-aux and use the pipe uh, syntax and pipe that output into the grep command, which you can use grep to search for a specific text. So if we know that our process is called hog.py, we can grep for hog.py, and that's gonna only show onto the standard output of the terminal anything that matches hog.py. So here, this is our process that we're interested in. It has the process ID of 16477. Now, if we wanted to terminate that process, let's say we didn't have access to this terminal window down here. Typically, you can do a control C, but if we wanted to terminate that process, we can use the kill command and pass in the process ID, which in this case is 16477 and take a look. When I hit enter, you'll see this uh, process be terminated and that'll be removed from our list. So let's do that. And that's exactly what happened. Now, very similar to what we were seeing with ps-aux, it's kind of a table of processes, right? Uh, there is actually a command called table of processes or shorthand top top that we can execute. And that will show us very similar information as well as some additional information. This is actually a live updating screen of all the processes running with the most um, resource intensive processes showing up at the top. And then you have some other information up here as far as the system CPU and the system memory and the system swap. So that's all very useful if you wanna have a good idea of what's going on in your system. Now to get out of here, you can simply type Q on the keyboard and that'll take you back to your terminal window. There is on some systems available a better version of top called HTOP. It's, uh, it has color, you'll see it has lots of colors. It's a little bit more sophisticated than just top. Uh, like I said, it's not available on all systems, but you can see it has this cool graph of actually how much memory is being consumed. At this point, we we're using about half of our gigabyte and the CPU is pretty idle at this point, not even using a lot um, right now. So very cool very good things to know about when you're administering a Linux system. The next command we're gonna be talking about is the which command. And the which command, pretty much, there's a couple use cases for it, but tells you where something is installed. So any program that we've been working with so far, or any other program that you wanna see if it is actually installed, you can say which, and what what's the command that we use? So which PS, that's gonna show us that the PS program is installed to user bin PS. How about which htop? Same thing, that is installed in user bin htop. And you can actually see, because everything in Linux is a file, you can actually see where the which command is installed. It's installed in user bin which, and to do that, which which, it's kind of funny. Um, if Let's see if there's something that is not installed. So let's see if there's a program called Tony installed on this computer. There's not, so which is not gonna give us any output. Next up, we're gonna be talking about the package manager for Ubuntu, and that is apt, A-P-T, which stands for Advanced Packaging Tool. For other distros, there are, uh, we have YUM, we have RPM, we have DNF, depending on what other type of Linux operating system you're running on. So let's take a look at the apt package manager for Ubuntu. So 
To see a list of all the packages that are installed on your system, you can do apt list dash dash installed, and that'll show us a very long list of all the individual packages that are installed at this time. So you can scroll through here, see what's installed. Remember, we have the which command. You can also see if something is installed with the which command. Um, what we're going to do is use the apt package manager to install a new package. So we're going to install something called C matrix. So to do that, we're going to do apt install C matrix. And that's going to, whoop, okay, so I spelled that wrong. Let's try that again. apt install C M A T R I X, not C Martix. So apt install C matrix, this will be worth it. Trust me. And a few minutes later, that has been installed. So now that we have a new package on our system, we can do which C-M-A-T-R-I-X, and that is installed. We can also probably find that in the list of installed packages now. So let's take a look at that. And since they're alphabetically organized, if we scroll up here enough, there it is right here. C-Matrix uh, is installed. Let's execute this. C-Matrix, all you have to do is type that. And this is pretty cool. This is kind of like... Uh, a screensaver, if you will, uh, with the matrix type of theme. Next up, we have the SSH command, and I have already been SSH'd into my remote terminal session here. As you can see, SSH root at this IP address, but I'm gonna show you the process of doing that. So I'm gonna open up a new terminal window here. This is a local terminal window on my Mac machine. And in order to, like I said, remotely log into a server that is on your network or somewhere halfway across the world, Across the internet, uh, you can use the SSH command to do that. So as long as an SSH server is running on that remote server and you know the username of the user on the system that has SSH access, then you can use the SSH command like we're going to be doing to log in. Now I have a bunch of videos about SSH and how to do that, how to set it up, uh, but this is just going to be an example uh, demonstration purposes for this video. So SSH root at your destination. It could be an IP address. It could be a domain name. My IP address is 164.92.110.252. Hit enter. And typically it would prompt you for a password, but I have set up an SSH key, which is another video that I have that if you're interested, you can watch that. And the SSH key allows me to log in without a password. And this down here is essentially the same thing that I have up here. I'm logged into the remote server with a terminal session on the remote computer. Moving right along, next up, I'm gonna show you how to read the manual for any command that we have been working with or any command that has been installed on the system. And in order to do that, you can type man followed by the program name. So the first program that we worked with was the PS program. And here is a brief description of it. And then if you keep going down, it's going to show you that, like we talked about, uh, PS-AUX is uh, one of the more common set of flags that you can pass into the command. And if you scroll down enough, you can see what each one of those individual flags does, or sometimes people call them arguments. Um, and this is a really detailed documentation for the program. So you can have, you can spend hours in here learning how to use the command in a more sophisticated fashion. Now, to get out of here, we're gonna hit Q. And that'll take us back to the command line. Let's do the man, let's look at the manual for C matrix. And it says C matrix simulates the display from the matrix. Okay, there's some options that you can pass into it. And let's see what some of those options are. So the dash B flag turns bold characters on. So let's see, C matrix by itself, whoops, C matrix, C, one more time, C matrix. All right, I promise this is the last one, C matrix. All right, that is what the default without any arguments to the command looks like. So let's get out of that. And now let's do C matrix dash B. And we see some bold characters now. So that actually did uh, what it's supposed to do. What else do we got up here? What other options do we have? Uh, there's a delay option, dash U, screen update delay zero to nine. So the default is four. So let's try something like that. Do C matrix dash U and we'll give it a delay. As you can see here, dash U with a delay. Let's do a delay of one. So that moves a whole heck of a lot quicker with that type of uh, delay. Let's do a slow delay. The maximum is nine. C matrix dash U nine. Okay, 
much, much slower. So again, to get out of here, you can type Q. To get out of the manual page, you can type Q. And kind of like we did with which which, we can also do man man. And that will show us the manual page for manual. Now, if reading through a manual page for a program is overwhelming, or you just want to know a quick synopsis of what a command does, we can use the what is command followed by the name of any program that's installed on your system to get a one line description of what the program does. So let's do what is C matrix. And as we saw before, this kind of just pulls out from the main page, simulates the display from the matrix. Okay, so we can do what is PS reports a snapshot of the current processes. And let's go with our traditional what is what is. And that just says displays one line manual page descriptions. The next command every Linux admin should know about is the exit command. So we have two terminal windows open to our remote session. Let's get out of one of them. And it's really easy to do that. You can type exit, hit enter, and that's gonna disconnect our SSH session. And now we're back into our local Mac terminal window here. And if I want to exit out of the actual window itself, you can type exit again, and that will actually close the window and take us back to the desktop. The last command, and it's a pretty important one, is the shutdown or the reboot command. And I'm going to show you here, you could probably guess what it's going to say, what is reboot? And it says halt power off or reboot the machine. So simply by typing reboot, reboot on the command line and hitting enter, that'll disconnect any of your SSH sessions, terminate all the processes, and just like you would on your computer at home, to reboot your computer, it'll shut it down pretty much all the way to the point where it's unpowered and then bring it back up to a working state. So when it does come back up, I can log back in. Let's see how long that takes. And not too much longer, I'm logged back into my system via SSH, which by the way, if you wanna learn more about SSH, I have these videos over here, so check them out next. I will see you guys over there.